Hello, my name is Kaylee and welcome to my channel. I am a professional freelance makeup artist and I am so excited because I get to do the beautiful Amalia's makeup today. Oh, I love how this look turned out. Anyways, so I just prepped her skin with some Bioderma micellar water and then I'm using my hands to gently rub in the moisturizer. I like to use Embryolisse on my hands because then this way I can see and feel the texture on her skin to know what I am working with. For the lid, I am using Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, their original matte one. I find that it actually really does help the eyeshadow last a lot longer. And if you use a little bit, it won't crease. And then I have to set it with just a little bit of face powder. I think I just used RCMA No Color Powder. I use that one a lot. This will help the eyeshadows just glide right on top. Now going in with the Tati Beauty eyeshadow palette, I'm using, I think it's Soothe. I don't know, I don't use this palette a lot actually. It's her brown matte shade. Just on a fluffy brush, as you can see, I'm going all the way from the outer corner to the inner corner, doing little circles and swipes all over. And then I'm going in with a brush that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more defined, same shade, same areas all over the eye, but I'm just using that smaller brush. So it's being a little bit more defined for me. And I'm taking that same brush, same powder, and I'm swiping and pressing it on the lid down by her lash line. With this look, I wanted to do something different than I've been doing lately. Instead of doing a bright inner corner and a deeper outer corner, I wanted to kind of use the same tone almost all the way from inner corner to outer corner. Have it be very pigmented on the lid and then fade up gradually towards the brow. So I needed more shades. I reached for my beloved Viseart Grande Pro Palette on a fluffy brush and I'm just using a couple of those very light creamy shades right on her brow bone. This helps to soften and almost erase the shadow that's up there just to help it be a little bit more gradient, give us a much softer blend. And then I decided to pack a little bit of the deeper brown right on her lid, just down there by the lash line. This way it's a little bit darker right on the lash line and then gradually fade and get a little bit lighter farther up we go. Does that make sense? A little bit lighter up in the crease. And then I just used her, I think it was still Soothe the Shimmer on a just a flat um, eyeshadow brush, a definer brush, and I just packed it on her lid. I am going all the way from the inner corner almost all the way to the outside with this shimmer shade but I'm focusing it more on the center as well as the inner corner and not really doing much on the outside. I want the light to really catch the inside. Now, as you can see, we just added a pop right there on the center of her lid. And that is because I just went in with the lighter shade in the palette with the shimmer and I just popped it right on the top of her eyelid right there. Doing this right in the center, Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. The light is catching it so well and it really gives her this beautiful wide doll-eyed effect. It's so beautiful. And then I'm just cleaning up a little bit of fallout right underneath her eye with a little bit of lightweight moisturizer on a Q-tip. I love this trick because it doesn't dry out her eyes. I'm going in on the center of her face with the Becca, is it the backlight priming filter? It's the purple one. I love this because it's really brightening up the center of her face and helping the light catch those areas. It's so beautiful. I love this trick. Now I'm going in with my foundation. I have a mixture of NARS and Face Atelier on her face. Now here's the thing. I had to do some tweaking with her foundation because I originally put this combo on her face and I, th I knew it was just a tiny bit light and I thought it would be okay. But I found as I was blending it out that it was actually a little bit lighter than her neck and chest than I wanted, but that is okay. We are gonna fix it. It'll be really, really easy. So the way that I like to do a foundation is in very, very light layers. I don't like to stamp a ton of product on the face right from the get-go. I feel like you lose control very easily and it can get too heavy. So I like to work in small layers and sections and apply a very light coverage 
first and then build up the coverage where we need to. So this technique was able to help me match the foundation easier because I went in with a small layer all over her face. And then I realized "Mm, the color wasn't perfect. I wanted to adjust it a little bit. So I could have either taken it all off and start from ground zero, or since I knew I was going to add another layer, I just put a very, very light layer of a deeper color mixed in right on top. That deepened the shade to match her neck and her chest, as you see now. And it also gave us that medium coverage we were looking for. Light layers, they're the way to go. And then you can just build up if you need to in a certain area with your coverage, but not have the entire face have a full coverage foundation if you don't want that. Now underneath her eyes, I'm adding some Too Faced, the Born This Way concealers, right under her eye. Now, if you can see, I'm going in with the most product right on the inner corner, and then I'm using the leftover product to kind of feather out from that inner corner. This way we get more coverage where we need it, and then we let the product kind of fade out. I find that this gives a really pretty fade. How many times can I say fade in this video (laughs) between the eyeshadow and the concealer? You're going to hear it so much. Oh my gosh, I blend those edges like crazy. You'll see it. And we're going to do the same to the chin and then a little on the forehead there. Just right there in the center. We're going to brighten up those areas. Now I like to take my sponge and I like to blend out the outside first, if that makes sense. This way it's easier to blend while the inner portions of the concealer, like right there in the inner corner of her eye and the very center of the forehead and the chin, those areas kind of dry down a little bit. And I find it, again, it just gives a beautiful, beautiful fade to let those areas dry for a minute while you work on the outer edges. Okay, cream contour. Oh, Danessa Myricks. She has the most beautiful, beautiful contour balms right now. Oh my gosh, I've been loving them all summer. I love them. Okay, I'm going to do a whole dedicated video on them, by the way. But I like that I can just use them with a small, fluffy powder brush and apply them like powder. I don't have any setting powder on her face, so it still is just going right over excuse me, the foundation. But it is so emollient that it just buffs right in and almost becomes one with the foundation. It's beautiful. So I'm going over her forehead as well on the sides. We will blend that. I'm not too stressed about it. I know we'll go over that little area on her forehead. Right now, I'm more focused on getting the product deposited where I want it, and then I will fine tune it, buff it out. Right under that chin there. Isn't it so pretty? I'm gonna do a whole video on those Danessa Myricks contour balms. Is it balm contours or contour balms? I always get it mixed up. All right, I'm going to stamp out that edge a little bit. Now going under her jawline with the same contour balm. Can you see the difference in how well that contour balm accentuates her beautiful jawline? You can see it over there on the right side versus the left where we haven't applied it yet. Makeup is so fun. Now for the nose, My trick with contouring the nose with a cream product is, first of all, use cream. (laughs) I just love that cream goes exactly where I want it to and it'll stay where I want it to. Sometimes I feel like powder kind of, I don't know, blends out too much sometimes. And the second tip is to use a very small amount. Again, as you can tell, I like to use a small amount, small layers, and gradually build up my products. I find it's just a lot easier and it's very flattering on the skin to just start with a little bit at a time. So we're just kind of defining her nose. I think she has the prettiest bone structure, so it's so fun to work with with her and her makeup. Now it's time to set that under eye, so I'm just gonna press that concealer in, make sure that it's exactly where I want it to, and then I will go in with a little bit of powder underneath the eye. So I am using the Hourglass 
translucent powder. This one is really pretty. I like it under the eye because it's not heavy, but it does the job. And it also has a lighter, more vanilla yellow undertone to it. So on Amalia, it will brighten that under eye. And you'll see, I will also use it on the center of her face too, on the forehead and the chin where I did the concealer just to help further brighten up the center of her forehead and her chin. And then from here, I'm going to use my RCMA No Color Powder and stamp it all over her face. The reason why I'm doing the RCMA powder on her face is because that one doesn't have any pigment to it so that it won't cover up that bronzer we just did. Oh, I skipped a step. First, we're gonna use the same powder and I just went on her brow bone to kind of highlight the brow bone as well. Now we're on the RCMA No Color Powder, a staple in everybody's makeup kit. I'm thinking about doing a video on products that are in so many makeup artists' kit. Would you guys be interested in that? I think it would be a fun video, so let me know if you'd be interested in that too. Regardless, I think I would make it because it sounds fun. <laughs> okay, bronzer. These are my Benefit Hula bronzers, and I'm just going to put them over the contour. The reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted it to show up a little bit more on camera. When I have the time, I'll layer my cream contour and my cream bronzers. Sometimes in a, if I'm in a rush, I won't do that. But, you know, for the sake of the camera today, Amalia had a shoot. So we were doing camera makeup. So we just wanted to intensify everything as well as set it really well. I went in with the caramel shade, Hula Caramel. Do you say caramel or caramel? I say caramel when I'm talking about food, but caramel when I'm talking about a product. I don't know. I can't say like Hula Caramel. I don't know. It sounds weird. And then I'm just going right over that jawline just as we did before and a little tiny, tiny bit down on our neck just because our necks right under our chins and our jawlines, they don't get as much sun. So they're naturally almost always a little bit lighter than our face and the lower portion of our neck and our chest. Now I like to take my sponge and just press it over the edges. I'm going in with Hula bronzer again, but I'm using just a very small amount of toasted. This is their darkest shade. And if you can tell, I am just pushing it right back into that hairline. I am being very careful and very strategic where I put this but it gives a really, really beautiful blend. We have it deeper, way back by her hairline, and then we've got that medium gradual fade on the majority of her forehead, and then it just blends right out into the center of her face where it's nice and bright. I just find that this gives a very flattering gradient effect with our bronzer. To me, it's like a similar concept as if you're blending out your eyeshadow when you go in with your lighter transition shade all over and then you go in with a little bit more of a deeper shade and a little bit more of a concentrated brush and placement, if that makes sense. Then I'm using MAC Raisin for our blush on our cheeks. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I absolutely love MAC Raisin on my medium to deep skin tones. It is, it's such a beautiful color. I will say with my MAC blushes, I have to blend a little bit longer, but it's okay. The payoff is beautiful. And then I'm just running a little bit of Benefit Hula bronzer underneath her lip. I just felt like I wanted to accentuate her gorgeous, gourgeous full lips. Hourglass Ambient Powders, mm. Every single one of my clients gets these. So I'm going with the darker shade, the more golden tone, and I'm going over any potential line from that bronzer on her face. Even if I think we're good, I just run over that area with this powder and it softens it up so well. It makes the blend so flawless. And then I go underneath the eye and on the center of her face, you're gonna see it in just a second. With the lighter shade, and this one, because it's lighter, it's going to catch that light and give us more of that highlighted glowy effect. So the shade that matches her skin tone, I use that one just to kind of diffuse the lines. And then the lighter shades are used more of that for that classic 
highlighted glow. But I love that it's just the most angelic, soft glow. I mean, you can see I put it everywhere. You can build this product up like crazy and get, I would say, like a metallic finish. But if you just go softly right over, oh, you can see she's just got beautiful radiant skin. I'm going to build up a lighter shade right on her cupid's bow just right on the top of her lip to really accentuate her lips again. She's got, I just love her lips so much. Now I'm going back in with that brown eyeshadow from the Tati Beauty palette, and I'm just gonna run it all the way from inner corner to outer corner, just right on the bottom lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with the deeper brown, just a tiny bit right under that lash line as well. You can see I'm kind of concentrating it right there in the outer corners before I swipe all over. Now we're gonna go in with the deep brown again, but I'm going on a concentrated, smaller, defined, fluffy brush. This way, it really packs that brown on. I'm just taking a very flat, small, dense definer brush. I love this for stamping on that upper lash line and a little bit on the lower lash line. I just went in with some black. Wow. Can you see the difference? It really defines and accentuates her lash line. And I love putting just a tiny bit right there on the outside. I think it's beautiful for the shaping. And of course we threw some lashes on. I threw on the, uh, ooh, it was the kiss pompadour lashes. And now moving on to her brows. I'm going to show you pretty much the entire process with her brows so you can see that it does take a while to do brows. I mean, it definitely can, especially when we are tweaking and shaping and doing as much as we did today on Amalia. I really wanted to play off with her brows. She, she had beautiful, beautiful features, beautiful brows, and I really wanted to frame them with what we could do with accentuating her brows. So... I'm using my brow powder on a thicker, more dense angled brush. It's actually from Essence. I love these brushes from Essence. I buy, I, I stock up on them like crazy because I haven't found other brushes like them. But I'm taking my time to really perfect the outer tail and the arch. You're gonna see me go under the brow a little bit just to soften that arch a bit. I wanna give her a bold brow, but I don't necessarily want it to be extremely angled. I want it to still be soft, but bold. Sometimes I'll go in with a very small detailed angled brush and then just stamp product on as if we're just created in creating individual hair strokes. If we're going for more of that, like fluffy soap brow look, but today we kind of wanted to do a classic glam brow while still keeping it soft. We jumped over to the other side. You don't need to see both. And then I like to take a little bit of black shadow again and barely stamp right over the plastic band where we could potentially see any reflections in videos and pictures. This is just a very, very small amount. I love it. Mascara, of course. And my camera stopped recording the lip process. That was at the very end. So I will list those down below. But uh, let's jump over and see. I'm going to unmute it. Let's see what Amalia has to say. I can't get over the lip. The, I, literally, that color is so good. It's so good on you. Oh my gosh. Like, it's perfect. And the blush, it's raisin, mac raisin. Mac raisin. Oh my god. Wow. Like the mac oh my raisin. Gosh, it's so beautiful. Aww. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Kaylee, I feel so beautiful. I can't oh. even. <laughs> This look is how I feel inside. Oh. <laughs> this is how I want to feel. Like. Oh, I uh, isn't she so stunning inside and out? I I have watched these clips over and over again because I just cannot get over how beautiful she is. I love hanging out with her. I could hang out with you every day, Amalia. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, 
please consider sticking around. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up. That way it helps me to know what kind of content you appreciate seeing. As I'm trying to figure out with this new channel exactly what to create more of, the thumbs up and the comments really do help me kind of figure out what to bring for you. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I have, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.